I'm on the internet presented live. I'm doing a show all about Jupiter at night. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Jupiter at Night. My name is Chris. My name is Jeremy. Yo there, Jay Man. You frightened me a little bit with I your know. percussive intro. You know why? It's no. because you didn't have an augmented reality application to tell you that my oh. energy level is set to 11 tonight. You're right. We are continuing a look at future... Well, I guess last night we pitched it as the future of technology that we interact with on a daily basis. That's well, really that will change the at. way that we interact yeah, with the world yeah. around us. And, and, yeah. and we're moving forward with that because yesterday we talked about NFC, the future mm-hmm. of mobile payments. You know, really the whole idea of replacing your wallet with your smartphone mm-hmm. and how that's really going to, if that does happen, that's a major change for society and all of that kind of stuff. You know, I didn't actually realize it up front, but this has a really strong tie into smartphones as well. Yeah, well, it's funny how we, uh, we've... There's been a couple of articles that have come out recently from a few well-known science trades that are behind paywalls, but we have access to them, mm-hmm. and uh, we've gone through them. They kind of got our brain juices flowing about augmented reality. Yeah, that looks like a big trend, and J-Man's right. It looks like it involves a lot about smartphones. Uh, so tonight we're talking about augmented reality and if, how maybe if you don't it know what it is, this this uh, little picture behind us is actually a really good explanation. Now, J-Man, it is, not everyone watches the video version. It is reality. Yeah. Augmented. You've probably seen with a, overlays of information. You might have seen apps like Layer or uh, even Google Goggles to an extent, where it actually, mm-hmm. yeah, it, like the J Man said, it's overlaid text on top of areas that you might be familiar with, where it's pulling on top in of real life. What, like you, you, you could have Wikipedia information in there. You could have whatever gets populated. Some of the examples on this particular are like it shows where you're parked. So if you forget <laughs> where you parked, you can have your car locator turned on. You can have uh, restaurant reviews of yeah, nearby that places I going would on. Like. Now, other things that we've talked about are like you could hook this up to social places like uh, Facebook locations and stuff like that. So you can always see if, let's say you're driving somewhere for lunch, you can't figure out where to go. You drive by right. a restaurant and you glance over and your augmented reality pops up. Todd's having lunch at that restaurant. Oh, well, yeah. And so you'd give Todd a ring on your augmented reality phone and he, his face pops up in front. No, that's, no, yeah. oh, that's getting a little carried away. And it starts going, no, I like, the, I like the idea of instead of taking the phone and aiming it at the restaurant and having boop, 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 you know. There are currently five tables open, or there is a wait of oh, totally. ten minutes, something totally. like that. Yeah. Now, see, here's where I get pessimistic, though. For for one, is I really only see this being practical on mobile devices like tablets or phones. I don't, that, well, yeah, totally. I don't know if I see like I'm going to walk around with augmented reality sunglasses all the time. Well, that's your take on it, but that's a that's the angle that I think a lot of people are leaning is towards wearable I interfaces don't, I don't of some wear sort. That, Jimmy. Now, what if it was just a really classy monocle that went over one eye? Mm. Well, you know, just like, you know, anything's possible. I honestly, I thought the Bluetooth headset would never, I mean, just, I, I just never picture yeah, people but now walking you walk down things. downtown and, yeah. and people are wearing them. Of course, yeah. those people are kind of douchebags, but <laughs> I mean, they're wearing them yeah, yeah. everywhere. You guys kind of, so. it's kind of douchey. Just gonna say it. <laughs> You'd be like, if we came out here doing the show with one of those things. With our Bluetooths like, on. Like, what are those? These douches have something in their ear right now. I mean, but totally if it would. wrapped around in it and it was a little display on your eyeball too, maybe. then we would be cool, right? Yeah, uh, maybe. Maybe then you'd have something like where Google would release their version that runs Android and Apple would release their okay, version. Okay, now Dreams Void brings up this concept that I've only seen one place talk about as a potential in um, the live technological chats. evolution is contact lenses that could use a low voltage wireless signal to be oh. to communicate with a wireless device in your hand. Like NFC maybe. Right, so mm-hmm. it could actually display the information on a contact lens and you wouldn't have to be wearing bulky, bulky glasses or anything that like that. That sounds like that's I think that's pretty far in the future. So maybe we'll, let's reel it back to, to, to smartphones <laughs> while we talk about this for a bit because that's stuff that you're starting to see at least at the app level take off now. Well, and uh, you mentioned Google Goggles has been around since like 2007 or 2008. Yeah. I mean, it's not new. No. No, in fact, if you look at there's a lot of concept and research stuff that people were doing early on in 2009 and 2008 to do all kinds of things. It's not always about like information on the go. It could also mm-hmm. be like information that just gets augmented while you're sitting at your computer. Or just fun toys. I mean, this this is a showing a video of something co- called AR Sites, which works with Google Maps. And you can take landmarks yeah. from inside Google Maps and project them. You'll see this on the video in just a little bit. Project them into reality. Yeah, you get like these little diagram patterns that you print out and stick on a piece of paper. Yeah, so there's the Eiffel Tower in reality. And the camera on your, your webcam on your computer locks onto that, that shape, that object, and projects onto it. Mm-hmm. Not like an actual projection, but if you watch the video playback on your monitor, it shows the Eiffel Tower. Or if you were wearing a wearable interface of some sort with a display that you would see through. 
Yeah, so he it yeah, would be augmented. Right on there. That is so neat. Mm -hmm. So uh, I could see, like, for research, for school purposes, this could be amazing Absolutely. for children and stuff. Yeah, uh, as a learning tool for 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 people in school, uh, for kids, for educational purposes, yeah. they could they could at their own speed gather information about anything around the world around them without having to sit down in front of a computer and just be tied to a virtual interface. They could they could get out in the world. Like in your a sense, son, yeah. your son during our dinner break yeah. was out in the backyard, yeah, exactly. playing with sticks. <laughs> yeah. Now, if he was wearing a wearable interface, he could potentially learn about sticks. He could learn about sticks. He could learn about the type of tree that that stick came from and Maybe. why it ended up in your backyard. What I would like to do is if you he had could learn why the the grass in your backyard is four feet tall. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Or <laughs> what I was thinking would be if he had sunglasses on that were like you know augmented reality sunglasses, I'd have a big warning on the barbecue that it had big hot. Yeah. Do not whenever touch. he got near it, it'd yeah. be like brum, brum. exactly. <laughs> That'd be pretty cool. Another thing that people are talking about is you could use it for entertainment purposes. Maybe to like browse a magazine or something. In this video we're watching, uh, there's a gal here and you're, it looks like she's just looking at a regular piece of paper. There's nothing odd about it. But mm -hmm. once she looks at it through glasses that support augmented reality going through a computer, like the whole page comes to life. Now I want to point out this video is also from 2007. Yeah. This oh, is no, not yeah. new stuff. No, it's totally doable. That's what's so crazy about it. No. Yeah, so this is stuff that we've already had for a number of years. When we look down the road at where we'll be 10 years from now, I mean, because that was kind of our target for last night's yeah. uh, thing as well. I think that having, okay, first of all, having it on your phones is is completely doable. We've got it now. Mm -hmm. It just needs to be more fine-tuned. It needs to be, and I think this is why it's been around since 2008 and 2009. We've been seeing these demo videos like the one we just watched. It needs to be standardized. Right. It, it, you know, layer the Layer app is is its own set of network and its own set of information. Google Goggles it's, is its own set. All these different mm -hmm. apps uh, Yelp even has the Yelp app on the iPhone can do it, and it, but that just pulls in Yelp information. Right. It's like you almost need it integrated in at a level where it's just data feeds that go into it, mm -hmm. and that's just and those data feeds are. We well, mentioned layers. I do want to, from what we've seen, that's one of the best ones. So I'll try to have a, a link in our show notes yeah. if you want to check that out. But because that's got multiple layers, you can do the Wikipedia layer, you can do the restaurant review layer, you et cetera, can do the night scene layer, yeah, the adult scene layer. And they do something interesting with that. In that case, if you go into that adult nightclub with the layer app where you found it by layer, you get special, and some of them they have partnerships set up where you get special VIP access mm -hmm. or via or VIP like a dollar discount. off a drink or anything. Yeah, like that. Or yeah, or, or the $5 lap dance, something like that. I don't know, but I, I could see a whole economy coming up around the, uh, you can't He did start. all this research, by the way, not me. <laughs> well, I specialized my research. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I just figured I'd use it for practical purposes. Uh, I could see like going to Starbucks and Starbucks being, oh, you came in here by the uh, augmented reality app? Yeah, here's mm -hmm. your cheaper coffee. Right. But that then leads me to who populates the Starbucks stuff? Who populates the the strip club stuff? Well, who populated webs web pages 10 years ago? Nobody, because we didn't really have them. Well, but, more than 10, but yeah. Well, yeah, okay, 15. We're old, man. We're old. Okay, 20. Yeah. <laughs> It's, but, you know, the launch of the internet and web pages, it spawned this whole new economic niche for web developers, web yeah, admins. Web hosting. I think the same is possible of happening for augmented you'd have, reality. You'd have like an AR designer. Yeah. Where that that person like would be well known. For I just want to call them reality designers because that's, that's sci-fi. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Or, yeah, or reality developer. Uh-huh. And they come in and they... they like you'd see their reality profiles or, or, or uh, portfolios to see what other realities they've created to know if you want them because your story needs a special reality experience mm -hmm. and you have to have the We best. want our reality to be better than real yeah. reality. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Could you not see that? Yeah, absolutely. Maybe that'll help drive Designer the reality. They're, they're going to stop calling it augmented. <laughs> I, uh, it's not just strip clubs and stuff in real life. Again, going back to the computer and stuff like that, the porn industry, which is always on the cutting edge of technology, is also working on augmented reality porn apps they're out there now so you can have a porn star in your living room yes and you can make her move based on the way you move these ar tags so wow. you can animate the porn so it's almost like puppetry in a way kind of um well, let's, uh, let's that's leave your imaginations creepy. run wild with that because <laughs> yeah i don't know it's but you know what let's go back to what you were talking about earlier standardization okay. all right because i think that would be a problem because the only way for ar to really take off to really be widely adopted is if everybody could be plugged in together yeah otherwise you're just everybody's off spinning their wheels on their own little you know data island right and that's just not gonna it's gotta i mean it could be kind of cute and handy to have something like wikipedia information already always at your eyeballs that would be that would be kind of cool. I'd, I'd dig that. But it would be so much better if you could also interact with society around you in a, in a meaningful and, and useful manner. 
I'll it, tell you, you know, if you're not networked together, then it doesn't really matter. I don't know. Uh, see, the, the, here's the two thoughts that come to my mind. The first thought is I don't know if I truly want all that information all the time coming into my brain. Hmm. The second thing is that one of the things I've noticed just experimenting with these um, in sort of like some pre-show research is it's a lot better in major metro areas like Seattle oh, yeah, yeah. than it is up in our neck of the woods. Absolutely. This yeah. is kind of a metropolitan tech. And, it, it, and so that creates a schism there in mm. terms of the people who are uh, who are really hyper-regionalized and the people aren't. Mm -hmm. But then also, what do you do for the people like yourself? You have an iPhone, but it doesn't have an active plan. You just use it as like a Wi-Fi right. device. Right. So you'd kind of be cut off too. I Honestly, I don't think that I could afford an AR device if they came out on the market right now. I probably wouldn't be able to pick it up. So that means that I would be at a significant disadvantage from anybody else that had that information in their eyeballs. I mean, I would yeah. not be able to, if I wanted to go out on the town, I would have to look up all the information before reading my house. And how old school is that, right? Whoa. I mean, I mean that's like, so 2011 of you. I know. <laughs> But there would be that there would be that economic and the, social societal at schism. the point where this was that massively widespread that actually would be a big deal, right? It would be kind of, I guess, yeah. I mean, you would you would you would almost have to have people ch cheap access to devices so that people wouldn't have that happen. Uh, that so, kind of goes back to standardization as well, because if we could, by some miracle of modern consumerism, manage to standardize it all, that means that everything we interacted with on a daily basis could change. Cars wouldn't need instrument panels because you could get the information on your heads up. Uh, I mean, it, it, you, I wouldn't need, you would no longer need textbooks in classes because you could VR display the information on a blank page. I do kind of dig the idea. In, in the pre-show research, we found this website where they were saying, take VR and use it for practical purposes, like a mechanics. Yeah. So the mechanic is working on the engine of the car, and over up, the, the, the little pop-up comes up and says, all right, so you need to screw right here, and mm -hmm. you need to get this, and little things can come up that explain what's going on in the engine. Yeah. That Even could, I could probably fix a car if I had one of those things. That could be a major enabling technology. I think about also, I mean, we have a lot of tech-interested people, but we've done live builds of computers on this show before, and people in our chat room have saying, I'm never going to do that. <laughs> well, if you had an AR display on your eyeballs that could allow you to, okay, yeah. now you move this piece, mm -hmm. now you screw this piece, mm -hmm. latch it in right here, right. Make sure that you've got i mean then you can just step by step and and do the monkey's work with with the brain working for you that's very possible uh, and, and plus you could have it record the whole thing or again annotate and note mm -hmm. or how great would it be if just going around you could leave notes on the physical objects in your house you could yes. tag an object with like uh you know something just, i'm going to attach this note to the fridge so that way when angela comes downstairs and opens up the fridge she gets a note yep uh, so i like the idea of that i also think it could be awesome for the business uh, like in a, in a meeting, I'd love to have contextual information. Somebody mentioned somebody's name. Oh, so-and-so is working on that in so-and-so department. Mm -hmm. Well, a little beep, 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 so-and-so department. Do, 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 managed by so-and-so. Here's that person. Here's their email address. Mm -hmm. I'd l I, I really think you could enhance uh, a lot of Also, in your workplace, you mentioned how easy this would be for inventory. Oh, yeah. I mean, you could just look at a warehouse and see what you've got. Yeah. And have it immediately, because you're looking at the items and using the optics of your heads-up display, yeah. it could immediately track it, exactly what you need and upload that into your database or, or access the database and show you in real time, this yeah. box is missing. Or it says, yeah, according to, the, according to the inventory, we show three of these and there's only two on the shelf. Exactly. Hmm. That'd be really helpful. Yeah. That's kind of like the computer running everything too, though, at the same time. We're starting to get, we're kind of getting into like a creepy artificial, because there's a lot of intelligence you would need to drive that. Well, and imagine all the security concerns that would come up from all of this. Oh I boy. mean, okay, think oh about boy. this. A lot of you out there, I know you're out there, you have your Facebook settings improperly set. I know you do because they change them every oh, week. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys, that's true. You can't so, help but it. But <laughs> you can't, you don't really necessarily know that. People could be snooping on you, never telling you that your security set wrong. But if, if somebody is walking down the street and sees a, a picture, of you somewhere where you didn't even know, or you see a picture of yourself displayed as part of an adver of an AR advertisement on a business that you've never oh, been man. to. I mean, you could then start to notice the security faults Wouldn't that be of what's already in place. Like you're walking by a 7-Eleven and you look over at the 7-Eleven because apparently, according to the J-Man, everybody has to do this with glasses on and heads up displays because your smartphone isn't good enough. You walk by the... Okay, no, for your stories, you can be holding a phone. Well, all right. So I walk by the 7-Eleven and I just holding randomly... Gl phone. I glance my, my phone over at the 7-Eleven and it says, the J-Man walked in here for a Slurpee. You'd like one too. But I didn't. Slurpees aren't on my diet. Well, but then I would know your diet shot, your diet cheat. See? And I have those security settings in place for a reason. Busted. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Well, that's interesting enough. I guess I'd, I'd be curious to know what the people out there think, J-Man. I think it's the way of the future. I really do. 
What do you guys uh, think? I just think I, we have stumbling blocks to overcome. But, you know, it's just like I actually said last night. The problems of the now that prevent us from doing this might not be the problems oh, of I'm the sure. future. I'm sure. We could be thinking about things that we think are going to be the issue that just are not even applicable. Right. Uh, but have you got a chance to play with any of these early stage augmented reality apps like Layer or Yelp? Or uh, I'm trying to remember. There was one in the Google Marketplace that looked really I think it's called Jarvis. Jarvis, yeah. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> uh, so let us know. I'd like to know what your experiences have been and if you are at all, I don't know, maybe semi-interested in this technology. Hope you know who I'd love in. to hear from is huh. somebody that might work with AR in, oh. in any aspect, even if it's just like head tracking technology or something. I want to hear from you guys if you've got any comments on it. Totally. Yeah. Totally. All right. Now, the chat room is full of comments, too. So you guys, if you are not watching this live, like Cat and the Engineer, Cat and the Engineer says this actually goes back to iPhone tracking. They have a coworker and he gets his uh, Facebook updates wherever he goes. So now... He gets, you imagine if you were automatically combining that with some sort of Facebook check-in service. Mm-hmm. So every time you walk through the door, I could see where he's going with this, right? Yeah. You walk through the door, it automatically checks you in, and then you spam everybody that gets notified. <laughs> that would be super annoying. <laughs> uh, if you'd like to join in the chat room and give live commentary, go over to jblive.tv, and you can find out when all of our shows are live over at jupiterbroadcasting.com slash calendar. All right, J-Man, now Thursday nights are the last... Wait, this isn't Thursday. That's tomorrow night. So Thursday yeah. night will be tomorrow night, the last episode of Jupiter Night for the week. I will not be here. No, but John's joining us. All right. John's going to hang out, and uh, we've got some plans that we might take some Skype calls too towards the end of the episode, so it's a whole other reason to join us live, so you can call in. Are they going to be calling in with technology they think will change the future? or? Oh, I like that. I yeah. like that I, too. Let's do that. Let's. If you guys have an idea of a technology that uh, you've been tracking personally that you'd like to see us talk about on the show... And for like the next decade, so not too far from... About 10 Not years? too far reaching. Maybe years? something that's starting its baby steps right now. Yeah. That kind of stuff. Yeah. Or And, and anything that you have, you can include links to also would be very mm-hmm. helpful. Mm-hmm. All right, everyone. Well, thanks so much for watching tonight's episode of Jupiter at Night, and we'll see you tomorrow night. Tomorrow night.